Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. We are ready to start our presentation today, and we definitely have a good one for you. Uh, we'll be doing TD Engine and Seek Advanced Industrial Data Analytics. Today's presenters are going to be Jeff Tao, founder and CEO of TD Engine, and Kiel Ramdog, uh, the Director of Partner Success for Seek. Now, a couple of ground rules for today's presentations. Uh, very simply, any questions that you, might, questions have, that you might have, please have. feel free to enter them into the chat here on the, on the right-hand side, uh, if you see that there. And we'll collect those questions, and if we have time at the end of the presentation, We'll go ahead and, and do a quick Q&A for everyone uh, to answer those questions, but please don't be shy about letting us know what these questions might be. Now for today's uh, uh, presentation, here are the contents. So first up, we're gonna do what is TD Engine? Secondly, we're gonna do what is Seek? Uh, third, we're gonna do, show you a, a TD Engine and Seek integration, uh, the two platforms working together. And then we'll also show you some TD Engine and Seek demos as well. And to kick things off, we have Jeff Tao from TD Engine presenting. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to give a, uh, um, a webinar here. Um, uh, first of all, I will introduce you uh, a little, talk about a little bit more about the TD Engine. What is TD Engine? Okay. TD Engine is a next generation data history. Uh, uh, it, it can run on AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud, or on prem you, you can even deploy TD Engine on edge side. TD Engine can centralize data from different data sources. For example, the data from OPC server or from MQTT broker, or it can extract the data from PySystem or even from Wonderware, those traditional data historians. Okay, when you extract the data to TD Engine, it can clean, transform the data uh, to guarantee the data quality. Once the data is centralized on TD Engine, um, it, it, uh, you can use Grafana or Seek to visualize those data or analyze those, those data. You can even use Power BI or Tableau. But uh, today we focus on Seek uh, because Seek is the advanced uh, data analytics tool for industry. Uh, once the data is centralized, you can even share the data, data with your partners. You can share the whole database or you can just share a subset of your data or you can just share the aggregated data or a sub columns. For example, you will have 100 columns for your database, but you just want to share 10 columns. You will have like a, a 10 years of data, but I just want to share the data in last year. You can do it. So you can control what the data you want to share. Uh, it's very, very powerful platform. So TD Engine can extract the data from different data sources and clean the data. And you can plug in your own visualization or uh, analytic tools, or even your AI machine learning tools. You can share the data. Uh, but then what is the big advantage for uh, TD Engine compared with those traditional data history? First of all, you can always start uh, TD Engine in 60 seconds. Okay, uh, because uh, for to extract the data, you just need a configuration. You don't need to write a number of code. You can extract the data from MQTT, OPC, or Kafka, or PySystem right away. And also, we use a standard SQL for the query language. We support uh, like Java, Rust, Go, Python, R program languages. It's very easy to learn. You, you don't have learning curve. And also, uh, as I said, you, you can integrate SIG and many other analytic tools together. Uh, 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 the, another very, very good thing is you can register cloud service free. You can start using TD Engine right away. For example, after the webinar, you can sign in our TD Engine cloud to start to use uh, TD Engine service right away. You don't need to negotiate the business terms or months long uh, yeah, contract negotiation with us at all. Uh, and also, we are open source. You, you can download a binary code too. Okay, uh, that's the first big advantage. Uh, the second advantage is our performance is very, very, very good. I'll show you. Okay, yeah, uh, like for example, even if you sign in our cloud service, see that sample database is called the smart meters. Uh, you can 
15 years old of data is one second. Our performance compared with other cancerous database like InfluxDB or uh, TenScaleDB, uh, uh, our, our, our data ingestion rate is like 1.5 to even 10 times higher. For like a query latency, for query speed, it's even uh, one times or even to 30 times higher. Okay, uh, and also of course it costs much CPU less power. Uh, the CPU usage is much lower. Okay, uh, another uh, big advantage is uh, uh, for TD engine. It's scalable. It can support one billion devices. Okay, uh, we partition data by two ways: but partition data by time or partition data by devices. Okay, uh, we can our whole class can support one hundred nodes, but for many many traditional data historian, they can only run one single node. So well, now. With the growth of IoT, you have many, many time series. Your whole system should be scalable. Uh, TD Engine is designed for scalability. Uh, another, another big, big benefit compared with tradi traditional data historian is a TD Engine is an open system. Okay, first of all, T the core of TD Engine is open source. We already have over 22,000 stars and uh, on GitHub, okay? Um, and every day, there are over 500 new installations, uh, okay? Uh, and also, uh, worldwide, we already have over 400,000 installations because of open source. Okay. Uh, second thing, we support standard SQL. We support the standard JDBC, ODBC. So only AI machine learning tools can be integrated seamlessly as long as they support JDBC or ODBC. And the third thing, our data subscription feature allow you to export the data in real time to other systems easily and securely. So you won't be locked by vendors anymore. This is a big, big difference compared with the uh, uh, traditional data history. Uh, 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 the last thing I want to talk about is we support the big data, but uh, without the bigger cost. Okay, first of all, our performance is very, very good. So you don't require too much computing resource. Another thing is we are a simplified solution. We have a built-in caching, stream processing, and the data subscription features. So it reduces the system complexity and the maintenance uh, cost. Uh, uh, the last thing I want to talk is uh, our pricing model is totally different from traditional data history. Uh, Pricing is based on number of CPU cores instead of number of types. Uh, I just give you a very simple example. For 50,000 types, uh, each device generates one data point uh, per second, like one hertz data sampling rate. It only requires $820 a month. Okay, so think about that. For 50,000 types, it only charge you on $820 a month. So we can name, we support the big data without big cost. Okay, that's uh, my part for TD Engine. Uh, uh, Kale, can you pick up for us? Absolutely. Seek? Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Um, so as Chad mentioned earlier, my name's Kiel. I'm with the Seek team. I'm gonna walk through a few slides here, just uh, introducing those of you that might be uh, new to Seek to what exactly our team is and, and what our product looks like. And then later on in the session, I'll, I'll do a, a quick little demo to showcase um, the, uh, what the product looks like. So uh, Seek at a Glance, so this is our company in a nutshell. Uh, we were founded in, in 2013. Uh, we've got about 200 employees worldwide at the moment. Uh, we're actually a fully virtual company, so no office uh, anywhere, uh, which allows us to really have that global presence and global support for our customer base. Uh, we've got about 250 uh, customers and growing annually. And we really tend to uh, fall into four kind of core verticals around oil and gas, chemicals, pharma, and uh, mining metals and materials. But we also play in any sort of manufacturing process industry. So food and beverage, utilities, discrete manufacturing are also uh, within our customer base. Um, we also have a large ecosystem of partners, both technology, system integrators, resellers, um, and you might have seen recently on LinkedIn that we were a finalist uh, for a Partner of the Year award with, uh, with Amazon or AWS. 
So what our customer base really uh, looks like in those kind of core verticals that I mentioned, you can see some of the top uh, companies listed here. Uh, we often say that Seek is, is developed uh, by industry for industry. A lot of our employees come out of the manufacturing industry. Um, and through that experience, we've really learned um, what some of the key uh, challenges are that our process manufacturing industries are facing. Uh, these are kind of the top three right now that you know, pretty much every single company is facing at least one and probably all three. Um, we know we've got the net zero goals uh, around sustainability. We have the operational excellence. And this is probably the one that typically comes to mind when people think of data analytics, right? It's kind of better quality, better operations optimization, lower downtime, that kind of stuff. Um, and then just, you know, recently, I would say through the COVID years, we've really seen this, uh, this workforce transformation aspect starting to take shape um, in, in a lot of our customers. You know, what we're seeing is that a lot of the subject matter experts are having to upskill and take on data analyst roles to make their job, um, you know, drive business outcomes by using data, which is really a super valuable asset. I, I think I read it somewhere. I, I don't know who I'll be quoting here, but someone said that data is, is the new oil, right? It's a super valuable resource that we need to, that we need to extract value from. And that's really um, you know, what's, what Seek was um, developed for is, is to extract value from your data um, and have your subject matter experts do that extracting. They have the domain expertise. You pair that with the, date, with the time series data that's being collected in the field by all the sensors. Um, then, you know, that's, that's where your business outcomes are going to, to start from. Um, so we really believe that Seek is an enabler for that digital transformation. It's not the end all be all but it is certainly an enabler to pair your subject matter expertise with the data uh, and start addressing some of the barriers that you might have to achieving uh, those goals. Uh, this is what Seek looks like. So the Seek platform, as well as uh, any solution suite that can be built on top of it. I'm gonna start kind of in the middle there. So Seek is a SaaS offering, uh, fully in the cloud, uh, dedicated customer instances, so highly secure. Um, below that, on the left-hand side, you'll see the connections to a variety of data sources. So TD Engine being one of the, of the uh, data sources that we connect to. Um, we have about 45 different native connectors that allow connectivity to both cloud data sources as well as on-prem. Um, obviously, using cloud data systems to aggregate all your data in one place, that's, that's absolutely a great um, direction to go. But not all customers or, or companies are at that stage in their journey. So potentially connecting to the data on-prem, on-site, wherever it might be located, can accelerate uh, their journey into analytics. Um, and then above the SaaS layer, you'll see all the, the applications. So starting in the middle, Seek Workbench, we kind of think of this as the workhorse. Uh, this is where our typical user persona, a process engineer or equipment reliability engineer, perhaps even in our environmental engineer, uh, might be doing their analysis. This is where they uh, they pull up the data that's been connected to uh, through, the, uh, through the Cortex or our server layer, um, and they'll provide some no-code, low-code uh, point-and-click tools to be able to do some self-service analytics. And this is where we really bring the expert and the data together. Um, I think one of the maybe unsung heroes of Seek is the time series uh, data handling that we do through those connectors and through our server. Really, the end user doesn't have to care what the different sampling rates might be or how it's stored in the data source. We just kind of make it seamless. We show the data no matter where it's coming from or what sampling rate it might be. And then the, the engineers and all that don't have to worry about the actual kind of data stuff up front. Um, another key message maybe is we don't move the data around. So we simply connect to the data in place. We index the data source. Uh, we bring that metadata to the surface in Workbench. And that's what allows the engineers to find the tags that they would like to investigate a little bit more closely. And it's only once they demand that data that we actually go grab it from the data source uh, and bring it forward so that analytics can be applied um, on top. And then once the analytics are performed in Workbench and maybe some sort of you know, insights are derived, you can then take some of that analysis or resulting visuals and collate those together in uh, Seek Organizer, in interactive dashboards, uh, or potentially static reports for things like root cause analysis, et cetera. Um, on the far right, you'll see Seek Data Lab. This is a Python environment uh, built on Jupyter Lab. Uh, and this is where we see kind of the data science community coming together with those uh, SMEs in the field. 
Um, oftentimes, you know, data science projects, they'll need some training data sets or some testing data sets to validate their model builds. And this is where we see the contextualized data sets by those process engineers in the field really coming in handy for the data science teams as they kind of go through uh, and train models and, and build them. The other piece here is that a Seek Data Lab notebook can actually be wrapped up into what we call an add-on. You can create a custom UI on top of your code and it'll surface and seek, seek Workbench like any other point and click tool with that custom UI. So again, the engineer doesn't have to worry about the Python or what's kind of happening behind the scenes. They can just plug in their data, maybe uh, hit a few parameters and get those model results right there next to their, uh, next to their process data. Now, what this platform generally enables is obviously a lot of interaction between the experts and the data, but also for our partners or potentially customers to build solutions or applications on top of that. Um, and our Seek Data Lab and our extensibility API layers really allow for that capability. Um, you'll see Seek Data Labs powered by our Seek Python module. And if you go to the bottom right of this diagram, you'll see that that Python module can be run in any other external service as well, like machine learning uh, in, in Azure or uh, Databricks. So if you have heavier workloads, but you still wanna interact with that contextualized data set, um, that is still highly possible through our, our Python module. So what that really um, results in, in summary, is um, you know what I mentioned before is really, I would say if you take two things away about why Seek, it's bringing your experts or domain expertise together with the data in one place and the ease of, of connectivity to a variety of time series sources. Um, you know, that then becomes an enabler to potentially uh, drive additional, uh, a, you know, AI or ML projects. Um, you know, the on-demand access to the data makes it really easy for those experts to uh, go in and, and create self-service analytics so that you can transform all your experts into citizen uh, data analysts. We often talk about democratizing your data and your analytics uh, across the company. Um, and then finally, we believe that that really results in, in a quick uh, time to value. Um, and you know, these are some of the results that we've seen with, with customers, a very small sample size of, of outcomes, but you can see uh, quick adoption and rollout because it's, it's pretty easy to adopt uh, in terms of a, an application. Um, and you can also see some production and sustainability outcomes driven, um, driven by use cases in, in Seek here. So that's kind of Seek at a high level. I'll pass it back over to Jeff to talk a little bit about how TD Engine uh, and Seek are integrated. And then you'll hear from me again uh, in a little bit to show you uh, Seek in action. All right, Jeff, you're on mute. Now, uh, I want to talk a, uh, a little bit about uh, TD Engine SIG integration. Uh, okay, uh, for, uh, first of all, uh, <clears throat> because SIG support a variety of data sources, including standard SQL, but TD Engine support standard SQL, so TD Engine can be integrated with SIG seamless. You just need to pick up uh, SQL connect. That's it. So SIG doesn't do anything specific for TD Engine. TD Engine doesn't do anything specific for SIG. It can be integrated. How perfect, right? So uh, why we need to combine them together? Because TD Engine is a very powerful data historian. And the SIG is a very powerful, very good data analytic tools. For example, uh, I, I can, we, we, this slide tell you uh, why we need to combine. Then together, what benefits you got? So, like for for TD Engine, it's built to scale, right? It's a cloud native data history. You can run on cloud or you can run on prem. Uh, okay, it has a very good performance. I also mentioned it, we support big data, but without a big cost because it's a fixed price model, and also we are a comprehensive solution for time series data. Uh, for SIG, it's also cloud native platform, right? It's a design by industry, not a, unlike like Power BI, Power BI is more general, uh, analytic tools, SIG is more for industry. So uh, uh, both uh, TD Engine plus SIG together can provide a perfect solution for industry customers, right? So now 
I would like to take a demo uh, because a uh, demo is much better than uh, meaning words. Okay. Uh, uh, let me share my screen. Uh, share my screen. Okay. Hold on. Sorry. Um, so that's my screen. Uh, now let me uh, go to my t uh, go to tdengine.com. Okay, uh, I just use a uh, cloud to show the demo. Okay, uh, uh, for the cloud, I use a uh, uh, account. For the cloud, you can use GitHub or Microsoft account or Gmail to sign in uh, if you don't have an account. Now, let me sign in. Okay. Once you sign in, you will have a dashboard first. Uh, second thing, you will find that there is a data source. Uh, you say, I, I have th uh, th uh, three data sources. One data source is start, but there are another two data sources are still run. One data source is Pi. Another one is MQTT. Uh, you can even configure the data source by yourself. We support a variety of data sources. You can even uh, read the data. You even we even support the Pi backfill. You want to backfill data from Pi system, okay? We support OPC UI, OPC DA, Influx DB, OpenTS DB. Support MQTT, all those data sources. But I don't want to show you those. Uh, second thing, you you can once the data uh, store, you can explore those data. Okay, here we have some real time database. Like uh, uh, this database is from more than twenty power plants data. Uh, here is the MQTT real time data. Another one uh, today, I want to give you the demo for like um, this database is real time data from over one hundred thousand uh, smart meters. Uh, it's simulated data, but it's in real time. Uh, uh, we also have like um, uh, this database is my favorite one. It contains ten billion rows of data. Once you uh, or once you log in, once you sign in our free cloud service, you can check DB Mark. All those uh, databases are for public. Okay, you you can take a look. Uh, of course, we support all kinds of programming languages. Uh, we support the string. We put the uh, we support a data subscription. Uh, here today, I want to focus more on SIG. How to integrate SIG? Okay, with the TD engine. Uh, you just need to click tools, then click SIG. Okay. Uh, of course, you need to install SIG first. Uh, and also, you need to install TD Engine Java Connect because we support the standard JDBC. Uh, uh, after you install uh, TD Engine Java Connect, you need to reinst uh, restart SIG. Okay, that's it. Uh, I already have SIG installed. Okay, now uh, then you need to add TD Engine to SIG data source. Okay, it's very, very easy. Uh, uh, now, how to do? Uh, uh, let me uh, here. That's an example. You just need to follow the instructions here. Uh, now, let me go back. Uh, sick. Uh, I would install the sick in my local machine. It's a virtual on Linux. It's a virtual machine. Okay. Uh, I let me uh, close this. Uh, uh, VM ninety eight. So let me uh, start from the beginning. Okay, I already logged into sick. Uh, sick, right? Uh, I already logged in. Let me uh, put the uh, bigger. Okay, uh, let me a little bit big. Let me enlarge the screen. Okay, uh, let me enlarge. Now, first thing you need to do is, uh, you need to go to, you need to go to admin, administration. Now, I mean administration. No, it pop us this window because my my license will expire soon. Uh, uh, now, you need to add a data source. Uh, okay. Uh, here, data source. Okay, I just need add data source. Uh, uh, you, I choose the agent. Now connect. 
because uh, the TD engine supports standard SQL. So you just choose SQL connector version two. Uh, now let's give a name. It's say webinar. Webinar. Okay. Now, uh, I'll give it, uh, uh, data source name. Just say webinar. Okay. Now I need to config this data source. How to config? Okay. Now let me go back to my cloud service. Okay. Uh, go back. If you read them uh, here, I will give you instructions. I just need to copy and paste. Okay. Uh, TD Engine Cloud already tell you how uh, give you the configuration. It's just uh, you just need to copy and paste. Now I just copy it. Uh, now let me go back. Sick. I pasted here. Okay, that's configuration. But I want to make a change in the sample configuration is paste. I want to change it to another database. It's called Demeters. Okay. Uh, here. I want to change uh, test to Demeters. Okay, now everything just create. Okay, it's it's connection. Well, mm -hmm. it's oh oh, it's uh, where is my data source? Hold on. It's at the it's at the top of your data sources list. There it was pending. Oh, it's no. here. Yeah. yeah, yes. Now it's here. Now I just need to rebuild the index. Now the data source is a uh, uh, created successful. Okay, very easy, right? So now I need to build the index. Let's build the index because they are over one hundred thousand time series. Yeah, there are over 100,000 smart devices. It takes time to build the index. Okay, now I still want to do something more. I don't want to wait here. Uh, let's work page. Okay, sick. Now I want to search. For example, I wanted the data source uh, webinar. Let me check webinar. It should be here. It's here. Okay. The webinar is already here. Uh, uh, let me search voltage, for example. Uh, the index, I think, is still building. Oh, I already got uh, I already got many uh, uh, time series you can search, right? Like I say here, D two three nine three nine voltage at the combo with group ID equals to two. Then I just click. Okay, you see, we already got those codes. It's in real time data. Uh, you can uh, zoom in, zoom out, right? For example, very easy. I think the uh, SIC doing very, very good job for visualization. You can look at those data or you can zoom in, right? Oh, you can also uh, check on others. That's for voltage, smart meters. How about like a current? Just give you another example, current. So let's search. Oh. Did you know is uh is not there? How about San Jose? Oh, I, I, I forgot the name. San Jose. Oh, sorry. It's uh, it's not there. Uh still use Wati. Uh oh B O B O L T A G E. Oh, wrong spelling, sorry. So maybe, uh, for example, I want to search Cupertino, uh, because uh, C O P E R Tino, so Cupertino. You see, uh, I can find all those time series with relative is Cupertino because TD engine support many types, uh, support many labels. Uh, actually, it's kind of uh, kind of contextualization. Uh, you can save like location, lay a uh, model, number, group, number, whatever you want. Okay, so uh, here that's for Cupertino. Uh, it's current voltage. You, you have many, right? So uh, very, very easy. Uh, now let me go back. 
So, of course, you can do more. I'm not an expert on SIG. Uh, Kale can talk about more about how to do those analytics. Uh, let me go back to uh, our cloud. Uh, so, uh, let me summarize how to integrate the SIG with the uh, uh, how to integrate the SIG with TD Engine? You just need to log in to our TD Engine cloud, click SIG, follow the instructions, copy and paste the configuration. That's it. Copy the configuration and paste it into uh, SIG. Uh, once the data source uh, is built, you just need to build the index. Then you can search the tenses inside the SIG. Uh, so it's very, very easy. Okay, and of course, uh, um, uh, our TV uh, cloud is very, very powerful. I hope you can, uh, after the webinar, you can register. It's free, okay, uh, for one month free. Okay, I think that's for my demo part. Let me handle to, uh, oh, okay, sorry. Let me stop sharing. Uh, what else? All right. Yeah, so that's I, our, our demo. No, no, yeah, Kale, it's your part for SIG demo. Sounds good. All right, so I think you guys are seeing my screen. So I, I did pre record something just because I wanted to make sure that, um, you know, we could show a breadth of things in, in the time we have available today. Um, I'm going to run through, uh, spend most of my time in, in Workbench, just kind of running through a simple use case. In this case, we're going to use some. Uh, emissions data, so a, a NOx sensor. Uh, we're going to contextualize it to only aggregate some of that NOx data when the actual unit is online. And then I'll show a couple of screenshots of uh, what an organizer topic would look like and then uh, what Seek, Seek Data Lab will look like. So I'll be just going to go jump in here and start um, the recording. All right, so just kind of picking up from uh, where Jeff left off. So now that the data source would be connected, you can see TD Engine here is connected to my uh, demo environment. Um, I can actually go create a new workbench analysis um, as Jeff showed and actually pull up and start looking for some of that, um, some of that data. Um, I'm just configuring the workbench here, kind of creating a simple demo uh, setup. And now I'm going to go and search for my tags. Uh, I'm going to filter down to the TD Engine data source. So you can see in that list, there's a lot of different data sources connected here. Um, you can see I'm searching for tags using some wildcards, just so I can pull up everything that's prefixed with MG underscore. Um, and in this case, as I mentioned, I'm going to pull up this um, NOx uh, emissions tag. And then I'm also going to find a BTU signal, which is going to tell me when this unit is actually um, operating. And just fair word of caution, this is just example data. So um, it is going to be repeating um, and maybe not as real life as we'd like it to be, but I think it'll get the point across. Um, so you can see how easy it is to kind of manipulate the trend view, kind of zoom in, zoom out in time. Um, and here I'm going to use the journal to just kind of document the steps that I want to take um, in this analysis. Uh, we've already searched for our tags from the, from the data source. Uh, we are actually reviewing uh, the raw data here. And here's the first analytic that I want to apply. I'm going to identify those periods where my unit is online. So in this case, I'm going to use that BTU signal. I'm going to use some simple logic to create what we call a condition. Um, and a condition is made up of events or capsules. And you can see these capsules are these events that meet the condition. And you can then play around with some different visuals you know, laying them side by side or overlaying them. It's very useful in, in batch and, and those types of operations. Now that I have my period of interest, what I'm doing here is taking links in my journal. So this is a key feature in Seek to kind of do your knowledge capture as you build up an analysis. Um, as we know, engineers move around in, in facilities or in companies. And so this is a way to track how these analyses are built. So the next step I'm going to do is a little bit of data cleansing on my NOx signal. So I said I only care to aggregate the data while my unit is actually in operation. Um, so I'm going to use that condition that I created and cleanse my NOx signal to only show me data during uh, my period of operation. I'm also going to set some units in case the data source isn't providing that information. We can read it in from the data source, but in this case, my example data did not. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and set some units um, on that signal. So now you can see 
the orange signal at the bottom is just snippets of that blue signal during uh, those periods when my unit is actually in operation. So now that I have a cleanse signal, I've contextualized it a little bit. Now I can start doing some uh, aggregation. I could pass this off to a data scientist to pull it into a model for training, you know, whatever the next step um, would look like. So in this specific example, I'm going to take that orange signal and I'm going to aggregate it, essentially to totalize the amount of emission over a 24 hour period. So this is the type of stuff that um, we see a lot of customers doing now is looking at their emissions data, trying to aggregate it for reporting purposes, but also to start taking action, right? If we want to reduce emissions, we need to know what they are and we need to know how to reduce them. Um, so bringing that visualization to the operations teams on what they're emitting at any given time is very critical for them to be able to adjust operations accordingly. So in our case, we're adding some limits here. Those limits might be provided by the environmental department to say, hey, you got to stay below these on a daily basis. And now you can see a signal at the bottom of the screen, uh, which kind of aggregates over a 24 hour period. And you can see one day we're under the limit and one day we're exceeding the limit. So this is how we can see this in, in a trend view. Uh, we could also change the visualization to a uh, table. So now you can see the kind of aggregated data in the tabular form, and we maintain those limit colors. So that was interesting to look at kind of on one unit or one specific case. But another power of Seek is the ability to now scale that analysis out to um, you know, other similar units where you might be doing the same thing. Um, so you know, Jeff was kind of mentioning how the tags, you know, they might be Cupertino or maybe San Jose or you know, however the tags are being labeled in your uh, data system, you can use some of that metadata then to create hierarchies in Seek. And so what you're seeing on the screen right now is a feature of ours called Asset Group, which allows a user to use point and click capability to build up that asset contextualization. So they can actually build a hierarchy in, uh, in Seek if it's not already existing uh, somewhere else. And they can then apply calculations that scale across that asset hierarchy that they're creating. So I'm starting with the two raw tags here, the NOx sensor tag, as well as that BTU tag I'm using to determine if the unit is online. Um, once I have that, you know, here I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually configure the, uh, the BTU. And then once I have these two raw tags, I can actually apply those calculations we did on the previous uh, use case across this entire hierarchy. So here I'm configuring the calculation into my asset group. Um, I'm going to make sure that it's applied to the raw tags in this asset group. And then we're going to build out uh, the entire use case. So here I kind of fast forward. Now I've got all the tags built out. I've got my limits baked into this as well. Um, and now you can see I've got an asset tree on the left hand side that I can drill into. And these are now my raw data contextualized into an asset relative uh, format. What I can do then is I can look at one asset or I can asset swap to the other asset. So I can quickly compare one asset against the other uh, and how they might be operating. Or we could visualize the whole field um, by putting it into what we call a tree map. And you can see all the different units kind of in one screen. So we see unit A is doing fine, unit C is not. I can click into unit C, do some troubleshooting, you know, perhaps pull some other uh, trends onto the screen, maybe flow rates, pressures, temperatures to do some diagnostic or troubleshooting on why unit C might be above exceedance. So then once we have these analyses, we can gather them in what we call organizer topic. It's our dashboarding interface. Um, you can take any you know, amount of uh, different workbench analyses together uh, into an organizer. And the asset relative context is still here as well. So you can build these dashboards relative to an asset and swap around as you go so you can quickly look at your different assets. You can also build dashboards that are maybe a level up. This might be more interesting for management, right? Where you see the whole field and you can see which assets are underperforming and then by exception, um, you know, maybe address them. Here we're going into uh, Seek Data Lab. So this is that Python environment, uh, leveraging the Python module with our, uh, which shortens to SPY. Again, similar capabilities as you have in Workbench. You can search for the data, you can pull it into, um, into uh, Data Lab. Now, I think the key point that I wanna make here is for data scientists, this could be very uh, interesting because again, we've already contextualized it by saying the unit is online, or in this case, the vibration tags 
where they might say, this is a training period. This is when the unit was operating as expected. And the data science folks can then use that knowledge to say, okay, this is what good data looks like. Let's model to find when we're not in a good operating mode and predict failure before it happens. Uh, and so that's kind of what this uh, use case that we're scrolling through here is doing, but they're actually only pulling in the data points that matter to them for a training data set. So that's kind of, I think, the beauty of the subject matter expert in Seek Workbench contextualizing your data, adding that asset context, uh, unit operating context, that domain expertise baked into the data. So then you can go forward and do machine learning projects, uh, whether it's in Seek Data Lab or potentially in uh, Databricks or Azure or you know somewhere else uh, like AWS. Um, so just kind of scrolling through here, once let's say you build the model, the other thing you can do is if you uh, your model output is a time series value, you can then push that back into Seek Workbench. So now you can provide that output over to the engineers who are working in Seek, who are used to seeing kind of that trend display, you can give them back those model results and they can overlay that with their process information um, in, in one place. So there's quite a bit of power there in, in those two groups um, coming together. And as I mentioned earlier in the slides, you can also wrap up this uh, code set into uh, what we call an add-on. And that can be with, a, with kind of a, a simple user interface that can then be surfaced in Seek Workbench, which can become a point and click tool to get through, um, to get through the, uh, the code. All right, so that's you know very quickly what I wanted to demo um, relative to uh, Seek. And um, I'm sure there's gonna be questions. There was a lot I think that we covered there very quickly. Uh, so please reach out if there's any additional questions or follow-ups around Seek that uh, that we can answer. <clears throat> Thank you, guys. Um, uh, yeah, there, there should be many uh, before questions. Uh, I still want to show you uh, uh, something more to everybody. Uh, let me share the screen again. Uh, I want to emphasize something. Uh, it's uh, uh, for our TD Engine Cloud. Uh, you can always register free. You don't need a credit card. And also cloud can run on three clouds, Azure, AWS, or Google Cloud. And one more thing I want to mention is uh, our pricing is transparent. Uh, we, we even have a price plan estimate. For example, here, data sampling period in seconds, just one second. I change this to 50,000 types. How much? You just need to pick up a start. Start is eight twenty dollars per month. Let give you another example. How about half a million types? It calculation tell you you need X large. X large, you just need to pay thirteen uh, one fifty dollars a month. So it's tr transparent. It's we also provide the calculator for you. Uh, another thing, I still want to run a demo because I'm really proud of our performance. Uh, um, if you, uh, after you sign in, um, uh, we have the, you, please check the DB mark, the sam sam sampling database. For one, uh, for some, one sample database is called the smart meters. Uh, we even save some favorite uh, SQL here. Let me just run one simple SQL. It select the count, max, average, voltage from 10 billion rows of data. Uh, let's check how fast it return. It return you the result right away in less than one second. It only cost you 400 milliseconds. That's for 10 million rows of data. It only take you 400 milliseconds. Okay, uh, let's run another SQL. For example, uh, like say, uh, for, for, for this one, it's, uh, I want to uh, calculate the average current max voltage for every one single day for one specific smart device. Let's calculate. It will return you right away. For every day's data, it aggregates them together. Okay, so it's very, very fast. I hope you can sign our cloud service to experience our very good performance. Okay, that's what I want to uh, add for our demo. Uh, every feature for
for our cloud service you can try. And also another very good feature is for data replication. I hope you can try too. You can replicate the data from one instance to another instance. You can replicate the data from Azure to AWS or from your private cloud to public cloud. Oh, very, very easy. You, you just need a, like a from which database and also you will specify the data source name for your target. Very easy. Just a few seconds, you set up everything. So uh, that's what I want to uh, add more. Okay. Now I think let's go back to questions. Chat, maybe you can connect the questions. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. Yep, we do have a question here uh, from David. And the question is, where do the seek analyses results live? And can they be written back to TD Engine? So maybe for the first part, we'll have Kiel answer. Um, and then maybe we can have both of y'all uh, answer the second part of this question, if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, all the all the analytics that you create, so anything after the raw tags, they live on the Seek server. Um, and what we see quite a few customers do is that whenever kind of the final analytic is completed, uh, they'll use something like the Seek Python module to write that data to, uh, you know, it could be a data store like TD Engine, or it could be, you know, other dashboarding uh, like Power BI or uh, you know whatever else they want to they want to bring it to. So that's I would say the flexibility of Seek's API with our Python module really allows you to take the data that you do create in Seek uh, and, and bring it to other uh, other locations. Cool. Thanks, Kiel. And I, I maybe you answered the second part of this question. Can they be written back to TD Engine? I, I guess it's more of a yes or no question. <laughs> I I think it would be. Um, but that that might be a question for you guys to answer. I, I assume I assume we'd be able to. I mean, we can write back to SQL databases, so I, I would imagine I would imagine we can. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely, you can write the data back to TD Engine because it's for the standard SQL. Yeah, great, good to know. Another question here from Rebecca. Uh, what are the advantages of using TD Engine with Seek instead of a different historian like maybe Aviva Pi? Oh, very good question. So uh, I think uh, TD Engine has very good performance. But when you reach, extract the data from data historian for analytics, you need a very small latency. For example, from 100,000 uh, smart meters, it make it it may take minutes to extract those data for analysis. But for TD Engine, it's very easy, less than one second. And also, I just also show you how to aggregate the data together. We, you can downsample data. You can do like a, a timestamp alignment first. Those, those, uh, so those operations can be done inside the TD Engine first. They move data out to SIG. It's more efficient. It saves your bandwidth, right? And also, TD Engine can run on many clouds. Uh, Iviva Data Hub only can be run on Azure. <laughs> okay, I think that's a big, big advantage. <laughs> okay. Kiel, would you like to add anything? Yeah, I, I mean, I think for us, um, you know, Seek, because we connect, like we really rely on the data sources performance and how it serves up the data. So I think that would be the, you know, the, maybe the big driver there is, is whether it improves how quickly the data can be visualized um, in Seek. I mean, we rely on, on the data sources to, to serve up that data. Um, so, yeah. Thank you, Kian. Thank you. That's good. Great. Well, uh, th I think that's it for the questions that we have in the chat, and I think we're ready to to wrap things up here today. Um, so if, if you'd like to try Seek, feel free to reach out to Kiel or anybody uh, from Seek who's been here on the presentation with us. Uh, TD Engine would especially like to thank Seek for allowing us to present with you and show why we're such strong partners together. If you want to try TD Engine, TD Engine is open source. So you can either register on our cloud for free, as Jeff said. You can download our software, our open source software. You can even fork it, uh, tweak our 
our source code contribute to our community. If you have any uh, business questions or commercial questions, feel free to send us an email at business at tdengine.com. Uh, thank you, Kiel. Uh, he just popped his email into the chat there for everyone to see. Uh, really appreciate that. And again, thank you to Sika for allowing us to present with you. We hope everybody in the chat saw value in the presentation today. Thank you for uh, to those who asked those questions, uh, definitely helping us expose a little bit more about why our partnership is so strong. And uh, we look forward to seeing y'all in the future again. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Okay. Thanks. Thank everybody. you all. All right. Take care.